WWE 2010. Now, I know this is a little late, but hey, better late than never. And uh, 2010 started off with something quite amazing. Bret Hart, back in the WWE, kicking off the new year. Brought back memories of his time there, the screw job, him going to WCW, Owen's death, and the idea that he would never, ever come back to WWE, even the Hall of Fame stuff. So it was good to see him, see him in that ring. And I truly marked out for him and Shawn Michaels. It's the first marked out moment of the year for me. Um, seeing those two talk about one another, putting one another over, and then the handshake and the embrace, and hearts bearing the hatchet, but Vince wasn't. So you had that storyline. You had Michaels, you know, wanting a rematch against Taker and putting his career on the line. Streak versus career. Just that build up was another thing. And Edge, you know, coming back from injury and winning the Rumble and uh, going after Jericho and, you know, it all was stuff I really wanted to pay attention to, stuff I wanted to watch. And then after WrestleMania, Michaels retires, and I've talked about Michaels, and that was mark out moment number two for me. Um, I don't know, you know. It's still strange not seeing him on TV on a regular basis, but I guess we all have to move on at some point. But him being inducted is probably reason enough for me to go to Atlanta. I'm still debating, but who knows? Maybe. Maybe. I would love to see him inducted. Live, I would love to see it. And after WrestleMania, I mean, ECW kind of fell by the wayside and people were critical. And WWE had this new idea, NXT. And I got to say, I really enjoyed the show. thought the concept was a great concept. You have pros coaching uh, rookies, you know, guys who are new to the company, being coached by guys who've been established in the company. And Michael Cole started coming out of his shell in a way, you know, he was no longer a commentator. Who would have thought in 2010 we would go from that, Michael Cole just calling the action to becoming part of the action, becoming a heel personality, the voice, voice of WWE. Well, at least the raw anonymous general manager, but now he has a catchphrase. Who would have thought it? Back to NXT. Getting new guys over and uh, really giving guys a platform and how bad do you want it and elimination process. And brought in Brian Daniel. I had known Brian. I'd seen Brian's work. I was a fan of his. Uh, you know, always thought he was great. Had a great grasp of psychology. I got trained by Sean and hit the Indies. And, you know, probably one of the first guys I knew of had seen on the Indies that had a contract and. You know, him and Kendrick and whatnot, but um, amazing to see where he's come, how far he's come, and the push that he was given. I don't think anybody really could have predicted it. Probably it was in the cards, and amazingly, they got to it. Even after they let him go and people were like, don't go back, oh, they won't know how to use you, and the guy not only is a champion, and provided one of my marked out moments was his shoot after he got uh, let go and um, the first time on NXT and the stuff with Cole you know and I just loved his shoot um, and then uh, you know his push and now he's got the two chicks you know he ends the year with being the US champion and he's got the two girls I mean are the Bell Twins gold diggers or do they really like him who cares? He's got two women walking him to the ring. Some guys should be so lucky. And just think, you know, they some you know, Mike Cole would say what he would say. Um But I watched NXT, I liked the idea up until it got on the internet and then I stopped watching. I even watched the Diva stuff. I was cool with uh, the first and second and third seasons up until it got on the internet. Once it did that I I stopped paying attention. No offense. If I'm going to watch TV, I'm going to watch it um, when I get a chance. It's hard on a computer sometimes. Anyway, 
Bud Nexus. <laughs> Probably mark out moment number four, something a lot of people talked about. And, uh, man, I, you know, what, what can you say about it? Uh, their invasion was probably the best thing done. The shock value, the way they pushed it, the way it was talked about, the way they overstepped their line to a degree. And that might have been by design. How do we know that it wasn't? You know, that's the thing. You don't know. None of us know because we're not in the meetings. But anyway, I digress. Their invasion was done well because it was WWE created. They created the guys that were part of it. So it made sense. It made sense in a lot of ways. And um, I liked it. I still like it. I, I like where it's going. Um, that carried them. They feuded with Cena. Cena was their target for whatever reason. They talked about a grand scheme. Guys came and went. Guys would get hurt. And yet they were able to continue to do stuff and be disruptive. And I might have issues with how they break stuff apart, but until it's completely dissolved, even the stuff with Punk, I mean, when you get to feud with Cena, you are getting your rub more than anything else. Because that guy can make guys. If he, you know, He's one of those guys that this year really allowed to get beat down continuously. And they kind of show some some weakness. Yeah, he gets he goes from zero to hero, but really when you're in the ring with him, you've arrived and it's your chance to prove and I mean Nexus did a phenomenal job, I think, overall. I and I'll get into matches here in a second. Um you know, not just the Nexus, you've got, you know, Albert Del Rio out of SmackDown who who <laughs> really had a great build up and um, I think they really have, you know, like him, so let's see where it goes. Uh, they definitely like to put him in situations. So, but rather than do like a complete recap, I'll talk about the champs now, uh, in my opinion, uh, as the year ended. You know, Natalia might be the knockout, the Divas champion, sorry, but uh, it really was a year of lay cool. I think they were kind of the non dirty version of the beautiful people. I mean, there were elements that were very similar, um, but they seemed a lot cleaner. Not that dirty's a bad thing, because I'm a fan. Um, I'm a fan of both. Uh, but I like Lake Cool. You know, Vic Grow, another diva who had a great year. I mean, go figure. Um, Santino and Kozlov as tag champs. I think that's just another storyline that kind of was under the radar for for most of the year but if you really paid attention you noticed it you notice how it would go uh, just kind of a very calm cool flowing to it and it culminated but at the same time it just proves there's not a whole lot of tag teams in WWE I think that's the one place they really seriously lack um, you know you break up the Hart dynasty you kind of put the Usos on I don't know what they're doing with the Usos um, Maybe the new Nexus group um, or the anti-former Nexus, I don't know what they're going to call them. Um, who knows? They could be a tag team, but there's really just not, it's very lacking there. Um, you know, you've got Kofi, who's now the Intercontinental Champion, but it really was Ziggler's year. I thought he did a commendable job. His matches were pretty solid. Uh, he never seemed to have a bad match. Um, you know, personality's coming along. He needs to get more comfortable on the microphone, but he's going to have his opportunity, I think, as he starts to kind of rise. I think Vicky's a good mouthpiece, but he needs to really up his game. Uh, that's the next step for him, I think. Uh, although I liked when he debuted, so not so long ago, with the hi, my name's Dolph Ziggler. Um... I've talked about Brian Daniel, U.S. champion, and uh, I think it's a great move because, uh, again, he's another really athletic guy can do stuff. They've really put over his his uh, label lock, and uh, kudos to him, man. You know, can't say anything much about it. Um, let's see what else. Uh, you got Edge as the 
world champion. His feud with Kane, a lot of people didn't like it. I mean, cartoony, over the top. Sometimes you need those elements, given um, you just had to be different. It was a different way of uh, presenting their feud, and I think it worked to the to a degree. Um, I'm okay with Edge as champ, and kind of rightfully where he needs to be. And now there's then there's the Miz, WWE champion. I don't have a problem with Miz's champ. I think a lot of people who say, well, he's not ready. Did you really look at his year? Because, like, starting off as tag champ, and he was U.S. champ, and he was simultaneously the champ, and then he wins Money in the Bank, and he's on NXT, and he's on the cover of magazines, and he's on the cover of the video game. And he's getting mic time, and, uh, you know, coached two seasons, seasons of NXT. He had a good feud with Daniel Bryan to help you know, with Brian Daniel to get him over um, and establish him. I mean, guys who make other guys are ready for the dance, and kudos to him, man. That was like the mark-out moment, <sighs> probably number four um, or five, really. Uh, what what else can I say about it? Um, the guy deserves where he's at. He's a great talker. Um, his stuff works. People will get over with him. He's put in his time. Um, I'm a fan of what he does, and he's fighting so hard to remain a guy who's not liked. And it's just a matter of time before everyone's wearing his T-shirt, probably. Now, um, real quick, just a couple of things, um, because it's not all hunky-dory at times. I will say that there are repetition to a lot of their matches uh, or matchups, they do them week in, week out. It can get stale, but maybe that's a way of seeing if the talent can rise to whatever they're given. You know, hey man, you gotta you're gonna work a a program with this guy, and it's just gonna be wrestling matches. And it's like, well, what can you do to to set them apart? I would think you know one thing is like a best of five series or something like that. If you really wanted to feud guys, that might be a way to go. Um, I was kind of weird about the Morrison. I thought his uh, match uh, to start off for all was great, but at the same time, I thought, why can that have started off the Rumble? Um, you could have done so much more and kind of shifted things. But again, you probably wanted to to do things, but you could have done that with Daniel Bryan. You could have had him open open the year with something and save the pay per view match. In essence, you could have saved it for the actual pay per view because it was a match of the year candidate. Now let me wrap up real quick. Um, I watched WWE for the execution, for the finishes. I I love the finishes a lot. I like how they do stuff. Their timing is great. Um, their guys are well taught, and uh, the psychology tends to work. And I'm still a big fan of it. I can mark out in it. I can hear the crowd, the crowd, the crowd. Top five matches. Um, Brian Daniel and Dolph Ziggler I thought was pretty solid. I thought. Uh, Brian Daniel and um, Chris Jericho at the NXT debut was a good, good, solid match. A lot of people probably don't think about. Um, I think Cena Ziggler, that very first match on Raw, was a really good match. Um, definitely like proving that Cena's leaps and bounds. I mean, he can definitely put a guy over. So Punk, man, just this is your time, buddy make the moment so that the people will, I mean he's done a great job I think Punk's one of those underrated guys over the years done anything they've asked and really came out shining in the end and I, I wish him the best with with the Nexus thing and whatever he's gonna do the SummerSlam main event uh, the seven on seven I thought was really well done uh, honestly probably the one of the matches of the year for me uh, goes without question watch that again if you can if you have 24 7 you can watch it and I should say just watch that match the match is really immensely well done and then of course Michaels and Taker it goes without saying I could do a whole video on that match um, that was a phenomenal match one of the main reasons I marked out probably the biggest mark out moment was watching those two in a ring side by you know facing off with one another yet again and just to think at the beginning of the year, could you say, hey, there's not going to be any Vince, there's not going to be any Taker, there's not going to be any Michaels, there's not going to be any Triple H, and the show's still going pretty strong. Yes, we have our questions, we have our doubts, but that's for another video and another time. I'll talk to you guys soon. Stay cool, stay sexy, stay classy. Yeah. 
you.